Child, your hearts. Welcome back to the studio again. As you can see today, I'm painting, and I thought I would give you a studio tour. And I think it's been a year and a half since we did our last studio tour. And uh, so I thought it was about time that I showed you everything that I'm working on. But before we get into that and I start sharing everything with you, I just wanted to thank you so much for all of your comments, um, all of your questions, and especially your subscriptions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm going to show you what I've been up to. Well, as you can see, I'm painting a really large painting. And um, it's actually a photo uh, that I took of my pool, which I fell in love with. And uh, it looks like such a wonderful abstract. And so we decided that it would be great in the living room in our house. So I've been painting this for us, which, you know, as an artist, you have that luxury to paint things for your own home and to change things up all the time. So it's, uh, it's pretty fun. It's taking a lot of paint and a lot of time, but I think it's going to be really well worth it. Um, I love water flowing and, and images of water. And on the painting wall um, is uh, one of my finished portraits of my friend Gina. And um, I've been painting Gina uh, for, hmm, I think, probably two years now, maybe. And um, she, to me, she represents every woman, the goddess in every woman. And when I saw all of her selfies, um, she has such a range of emotion that I really wanted to keep painting her. I just thought it was, uh, she was so interesting and she evoked such feeling. So I just finished this one. I'm really happy that, that I finished it. And um, I love my painting shelf. I don't have enough room in my studio for easels, for big easels. So I decided that this would make a, a great way to use the space and it works out really well for me. Here's another Gina portrait. Um, I love this one. and uh, This one is uh, Mad Angry Gina. Um, and um, I just finished that uh, probably about a year ago and just love the way it turned out. And I'm working on another portrait down here. And this is my friend um, Ella. And uh, it's, it's not quite finished. It's just at that point where I took it off the wall to work it on the table because uh, not only am I doing really close, fine, detailed work, but I'm also putting lots of layers and glazes in. And uh, so it, 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 I need to be able to really um, see it up close. So this is my designated uh, art journaling table. My art journal stays here and I work on it um, all through the month. Um, as you know, if you've been listening and following my videos, that um, I do a two-page spread every month. And so I've been working on um, this spread and it's kind of a continuation of things that have been going on in my life, um, a relationship issue that that I'm, I'm really wanting to resolve mentally um, and spiritually. And so I've been working on this and the inspiration for it actually came from the beach. And if you read my blog, then you'd know that I went to the beach and, and I had this wonderful inspiration just looking at shells and thinking about ripped and torn paper. And so um, the idea for uh, kind of piecing things back together and reframing this particular relationship that I have um, came to me. And so I've been using um, my mono prints, uh, dend dendritic prints and the mono prints. And if you've seen that video, you can, you can look that up to see how to do it. I've been ripping those up and using them and kind of weaving and working with um, ruffled edges in my uh, in my journal for this month for March. And um, it also inspired a, a brand new um, set of a series that I'm gonna be working on. And I'm gonna show you what I'm doing with it. So. so this is my journaling table. This little space here is one of those little meditative spots for me. I do all my stitching uh, and sewing work here. Um, little bits and pieces that I will use for another project. And what happens is if I get stuck in the studio, uh, I'll come over here and I'll start stitching things and putting things together uh, or you know, stitching things up. 
and then I put them in a baggie and uh, I usually find some use for them in another uh, piece of artwork. Uh, sometimes the, uh, the, the stitched pieces of fabric or paper uh, just seem to bring that one piece completely together and uh, it just seems to work, you know, uh, these kinds of marks of intention that aren't, you know, done with a pencil or a brush and, um, and they just look so cool on the page. And then it, it just helps me to focus and, and forget that I feel stuck on something, either my journal pages or, you know, a new series or what uh, it could be, um, you know, a project for uh, Stampington. I just, it, it just releases that, that control and, and I feel really free. And then when I go back, things just fall right into place. I've been working on my uh, ribbon-tied, hand-tied journal, and uh, we did a video on that, and um, you can look that one up. And it, it's a floral uh, journal. It's about flowers, actually. It, it's not really a floral journal. It's more more about flowers, and um, it's it's turning out different than what I thought it would. Uh, I didn't realize I had so much energy around uh, around flowers, um, positive and negative. So. Um, it's becoming quite an interesting journey for me. And so it just sits here and when I have time, I just come back to it. Um, just taking my time, I, I don't have uh, a deadline to meet for it, although I probably will submit it um, to art journaling. Uh, but right now it's just um, a work in progress. This table sits in the center of my studio and uh, I love it because I can just really spread out and uh, do all kinds of work on it. And as I was telling you, uh, I was um, about my art journaling, uh, when I was at my art journaling table, uh, I'm working on this new series and it's, uh, it is about, I uh, hope you can see the sparkle in here. It is, um, these are monoprints and you can look up the monoprint video. They're, um, they've got uh, some metallic paint and I thought I would do a, uh, a whole series of metallics and um, with uh, ripped and torn paper and sorry I can't keep my hands off of this I just start working when uh, when I my hands just can't be idle you know I have to start playing with it and seeing where things fit um, and so I thought I would share this with you that I've decided to start working on this. This is one of the things that I'm doing. And I'll probably do um, a whole series of these. I'm just in love with it. I love the ripped and torn edges. And of course this isn't finished, but you can see uh, kind of where it's going and see the mess I've made, which is wonderful and yummy stuff, don't you think? I hope you enjoyed being in the studio today with me and seeing everything that I'm creating. It's really fun to share it with you. I so appreciate your subscriptions. I so appreciate your comments and uh, all your questions and look forward to hearing from you. And next time we're going to be doing part two of the uh, journal ties. We're going to be doing hardware um, like this fun little book uh, that I made many years ago. Uh, so I've, I've got some hardware pieces and then some elastics to show you how to use elastics in your journals too. And I can't wait to share it with you. So until then, ciao for now. on your bookmaking process. So I'll be making some books and I'll be using some hardware and some different things to tie them up. So uh, 